Hello friends and family, welcome to Camille's Kitchen. Today we are making a delicious blackened salmon with sauteed shrimp and I'm even serving it with a little cauliflower mash. This dish was downright delicious. Let's go ahead and get cooking. We are gonna start by making the seasoning for our salmon. I'm combining smoked paprika with garlic powder, salt, thyme, basil, cayenne pepper, and a little minced garlic. This seasoning blend is the perfect blend to get that blackened color on our salmon and shrimp one pound of a salmon filet today with the skin on and I am going to generously season look you got to work that seasoning into that fish I'm gonna rub it down and I am going to put seasoning all over it okay work that seasoning in okay press it press it press it because you need to do it so that the seasoning will stay stuck to the fish while you blacken it um, that's one way you get that blackened look on the fish and it also will taste super super good now on the skin side I like to add a little bit of salt because it's going to help that skin crisp up I have half a pound of clean shelled and deveined shrimp but I left that little tail on because you know I think it looks real cute and I'm going to go in with two teaspoons of that blackening seasoning and mix it in real real good and I'm going to let this shrimp be marinating to the side while I blacken my salmon. I have my cast iron skillet nice and hot. It is on a medium high heat and there's vegetable oil in the pan. You do not need to have your heat up too high in order to get that blackening effect if you're using a cast iron skillet. I'm letting my fish cook on the skin side for six minutes and I try not to move it during that time. You see that smoke coming out of the skillet? That's because the heat is high and those seasonings are burning, which is what you want for that flavor and that blackening, but you don't want it to get too out of control. That's why I say you gotta be mindful of your heat. Now, as you can see, my salmon was really thick, so I needed to lift up and press my salmon filet a little bit so that I could make sure every part of the salmon was coming in contact with the skillet. I really wanted all those spices to be nice and toasted. If you're using a filet that's thinner or a skinless filet that's an even thickness, then you may not need to do this, but if you have a piece of fish like mine, this is the best strategy for making sure that it's fully cooked. Now, after about five more minutes, you can see my salmon is super black and it is delicious. It's black into the level that I like it. If you like it more black, then feel free to leave it on there for a little longer. The side was a little bit pink, so I stood it up on the side and allowed it to cook for about two minutes so it can get nice and brown as well. And then after two minutes, I flipped it to the other side. See, look at that, gorgeous, all toasted and whatnot. Okay, flip it to the other side and let that side get a beautiful color on it as well. Two more minutes on that side and my salmon, ooh, this salmon is out of this world. It is delicious. Okay, so let's get ready for that shrimp. In the same oil, I am going to put my shrimp. This shrimp is gonna cook super duper fast. It's only gonna take about two minutes total to cook this shrimp and we're cooking it on high heat. So just be mindful, do not try to walk away or do something while you got this shrimp going, okay? Cause you gonna get some rubbery shrimp. And don't do it and then get mad at me and leave me a comment like, ooh, you did it to me, Camille. No, I didn't. Stay by your shrimp, honey. Stay by your shrimp. Now I put two tablespoons of butter in there because who don't like butter? And I'm gonna stir my shrimp. Um, it has been cooking on that side for about one minute and I'm gonna turn everything now so it can cook for one more minute on the other side. And look at those nice little char bits in there, all delicious and amazing and juicy looking. That is because of that seasoning rub. That seasoning rub is helping it to get blackened as well as the high temperature. So definitely make that seasoning rub. Don't sleep on it, baby. Don't sleep on it. My seasoning rubs are fire, okay? Now we gonna get started on that nice little cream glaze. I had to clean my pan out because of those blackened seasonings, they're gonna give a bitter taste to the sauce. So clean your pan, add two tablespoons of butter, 
and about two teaspoons of minced garlic. Saute that for about 30 seconds until it is nice and aromatic. And then we're going in with some white wine, baby, because white wine and seafood, mm, they are married to each other, okay? White wine tastes amazing. If you don't want to do it, okay, you can do a little chicken stock, but mm -mm, baby, I'm growing now. I'm going for the wine. I'm letting that cook for about 30 seconds, and then I'm going to put three-fourths of a cup of heavy cream in here, and I'm going to allow that to cook a little bit and add just a pinch of a little of that blackening seasoning as well as half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Now, because I like being bougie, I'm going to put a little parsley in there too, okay? Because you know whenever you're cooking and you want them to know you did a little something, something, you put a little herb in there because you see that green, and people going to know, oh you, oh, you did something. You was cooking up in your house. Right, okay? Now, let that cook until the cheese is melted and then we're going to put in our shrimp. I'm going to leave out four of my shrimp because I want to place those shrimp on top. You know, presentation, baby, presentation. And I'm going to swirl this cream sauce and my shrimp together. Now let's get started on this cauliflower mash. Mm -mm, do not click away saying, I don't know about cauliflower mash, girl. It is amazing. In fact, I say it can compete with the potatoes, okay? Now this is one head of cauliflower that I have cut into florets and I'm gonna add a cup of water and I'm going to microwave this for about 15 minutes until it is very, very soft. You can also boil it, you can cook it in the Instant Pot as long as your cauliflower gets really soft. I'm going to use a food processor to blend my cauliflower and my ingredients together, but you could also use a blender or a potato masher because remember your cauliflower is soft and you really can put whatever you like to put into mashed potatoes into your cauliflower. So I'm going to be adding a little bit of heavy cream. Of course, I'm going to be using some butter because butter baby makes everything better. I'm also going to be adding in a little bit of cream cheese as well as some a little bit of dried green onion because I was going for that, you know, cheddar and chives type feeling, you know what I mean, to my cauliflower mash and salt and pepper, of course, and I'm going to blend it until it is nice, smooth and creamy. And when I'm done, look at that. Don't that look like some mashed potatoes? Fool your kids, fool your husband, fool your girlfriend, fool your wife. They're going to think they're eating some mashed potatoes. I'm telling you. But it's lower in carbs, so I just love it. Let's play everything up. I got my salmon. I got my cauliflower mash. You know, look at them shrimps in that cream sauce. Mm, just delectable. I'm going to pour some over. Just let it drip. And those are my leftover little shrimp pieces and mm -mm, little food grass. Okay. And a butter on that cauliflower mash. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe because you know I'm bringing you weekly videos of flavorful recipes. Thank you for joining me today and goodbye.